Oh, it'll be a few days before we get to see these. Sheesh, no one appreciates the art of film photography anymore. Dear Tim and Moby, who was Alice Ball? From Paul. Alice Ball was a chemist who developed an early treatment for leprosy, a disease that caused the skin to change color, grow lumps, and tear. It also caused numbness, which meant if people got injured, they might not even know it. And those injuries could get so infected that they lost fingers and toes. In the early 1900s, when Ball was doing her research, leprosy destroyed people's lives. But it wasn't the illness itself that was so destructive. It was the stigma or rejection by society. For centuries, leprosy was thought to be a curse from God. Many societies saw it as punishment for sin or bad behavior. They thought that people with leprosy were just getting what they deserved. So it was nearly impossible for them to get the care they needed. Around the world, they were banished to isolated villages for leprosy patients. By the time Alice Ball was starting her career, the world had basically given up on a cure. But when a doctor asked her for help with creating a better treatment, she stepped up. Alice Augusta Ball was born in 1892 in Seattle, Washington. Her family was full of photographers, and back then, chemistry was part of the job. Alice saw them capture detailed images using substances like iodine and mercury. It was a magical introduction to the world of chemistry, and she was hooked. She went on to study how chemicals can be used as medicines or pharmaceuticals. She enrolled at the College of Hawaii and became the first woman and first African-American to earn a master's degree there. Remember, this was the early 1900s when women were discouraged from going to college and most of America was racially segregated. Black people were kept out of the schools, restaurants, and hospitals that white people used. For Ball, working on a leprosy treatment was a chance to help free others from unfair restrictions. It was also a fascinating and unconquered chemistry problem. At the time, none of the available treatments for leprosy were very effective. In Asia, people found that an oil from chalmugra trees brought some relief, but there were problems. Swallowing the drug caused intense nausea, so patients struggled to keep it down long enough for it to help. Injecting it didn't work so well either, and it burned terribly. For ages, doctors and scientists had been searching for a better way to get the medicine into patients. And Alice Ball, only 23 years old, was determined to find it. The problem with Chalmugra oil was that it was, well, an oil. And the human body is mostly made of water, which doesn't mix with oil. If Chalmugra could be dissolved in water, it would work much better. Ball taught classes and labs during the day and worked on the Chalmugra problem in her free time. She focused on improving its solubility or ability to be dissolved. To do that, she had to get rid of the part of the chemical that keeps water away and replace it with a new part that would attract water instead. After months of tireless experimentation, she succeeded. Doctors began giving injections prepared using Ball's method. For the first time, many leprosy patients went into remission. All signs of their disease disappeared. Instead of getting banished, they were able to go home thanks to Ball's work. Tragically, she never got to see that. Alice Ball died of a lung illness in 1916, shortly after her big discovery. She was only 24 years old. But her work continued to help countless people around the world. It remained the most effective leprosy treatment for decades. In Thailand, it helped so many that the king gave a chalmugra tree to the College of Hawaii as a thank you. Scientists kept studying leprosy, and today, it's curable. To help end the stigma, it's been renamed Hansen's disease, after the scientist who discovered its cause. Hey, could you hold that sandwich up just a little more? Ah! This'll be a good one. 